Hello students, welcome back to Kirim's English Hub. In this video, we are going to go through Unit 8 of Reading A, that is Dr. Dwarakanath Kwatnis. Let us get into this uh, unit with the theme of gratitude. What do you mean by gratitude? Gratitude means to be thankful. Okay, to say thanks, to be thankful instead of even saying thanks, you can show your gratitude in many other forms, okay, by helping, by giving gifts and all. So all of that together is called as gratitude and the theme you can see here on the right. So this unit consists of three readings. Reading A, Dr. Dwarkanath Kornis that we will see in this video. Reading B, Be Thankful, that is a poem that will be another video. And reading C, that is The Dead Rat. And that will be third video of this unit. Okay. Now, before getting into the text, we have a picture here of Mother Teresa, uh, the, where she is leaving, uh, receiving 1979 Nobel Prize for peace. Okay. So here you have some questions. Why do you think Mother Teresa was awarded Nobel Peace Prize? Because she helped many people. Many people had showed, shown their gratitude towards her without expecting any one single pie. She treated many other people. Okay, so she is a kind of a peaceful person who saved thousands and thousands of people from the illness and also from the poorness. Do you know the name of any Indian who may have rendered any significant services in any other country? And is still remembered and honored by the people there. So if you have any idea of any person who is from India, who went to some of the any of the foreign countries, who has done some work there, and he, that person is still honored in the uh, countries, in the foreign countries. Okay, even if he is Indian, he is still honored, he is respected. Do you know anybody? If you know, you can just uh, get that to your mind. Next, we have oral discourse here, talk on Mention different ways to express our gratitude towards the people who serve the society. Okay, you have to mention different ways to express gratitude. In which which ways you can show your gratitude towards the people who serve the society. Okay. Now let us get into this reading. Before getting into this reading, let me tell you briefly about this whole lesson. So this lesson is completely about Dr. Dwakanath Kotnis, who is um doctor by profession okay so he goes to china where he serves uh, i know they are in the chinese hospital in the chinese military for a very long time okay when Ch china asked india to send some of the doctors for the treatment of the wounded soldiers okay dwarkanath kotnis was also sent he was the member of that you know uh, the five member team of the doctors who go there so after the war and everything, he did not return back. He wanted to serve the people. He thought that he needed his services in China. So he stayed back and he served for many years. And he married a girl from there, China itself. Okay. And after uh, some days, he was also dead at the end when he was very young. And he was also buried there itself. His, uh, you know, uh, uh, cremation okay his dead body was there still okay it, it is uh, you know buried there itself so even after his death many uh, you know politicians between india and china who refer the many they refer his name as the token of gratitude that he has done towards china so in china many people they you know praise him they treat him they revere him just like they revere many other uh, you know chinese People who served their nation. Okay. And Darkonath Kotnis, though being Indian, he was one among uh, the, those people who were revered. Okay. Who have given very good respect in China. Okay. Now let us see and let us get into this text. Dwarkanath Kotnis. No other Indian can claim the kind of adulteration and respect Dr. Dwarkanath Kotnis enjoys in China. Okay, so in the first sentence we can see there is no other Indian who can have this type of respect from the Chinese people. Okay, 
coming from a family of doctors dr dwag uh, dr quatnis had always dreamt of becoming a physician physician in the sense doctor okay medical doctor he wanted to become a doctor always and the war of resistance gave him the perfect opportunity to make himself useful in the battlefield war of resistance was in china so that was the perfect time uh, you know which was which has come into his life and made him the best doctor he dedicated his entire life working as a battlefront doctor in china and rendered his selfless service to the injured chinese soldiers during the second sino japanese war dr cortnis contributed towards humanity contribution towards humanity will be remembered forever so dr cortnis he rendered he dedicated his entire life in the chinese military as the battlefront doctor battlefront doctor in the sense there will be frontline soldiers in the war right so when they get wounded these are the doctors who help them okay with the surgeries and all okay now uh, you know this was the war which was there between china and japanese okay china and japan so during this war there was you know huge loss of soldiers okay so at that time dorgan cotton served as the physician so dr cotton's humanity it will be remembered forever both by the china and also india let us see some of you uh, know kind of biography of dr cotton's here dr dorkanath cotton's was born in a lower middle class family in uh, on october 10 1910 in solapur mumbai okay he is born and brought up in mumbai a vivacious kid by nature dr cotton's forever aspire to become a doctor so he always wanted to become doctor like if you ask some children uh, when they are very young what do you want to become in future they would immediately say i want to become doctor i want to become engineer and all this so this cotton is dr cotton is also wanted to become a doctor since his childhood uh, as you can see his photo he is so young and bright here okay after completing his graduation in medical medicine from gs medical college bombay he went on to pursue his post graduation internship however he put aside his post graduation plans when he got the chance to join the medical aid mission to china so first he has completed his um, uh, you know mbbs kind of graduation in medicine from gs medical college that is in bombay okay so after that he wanted to pursue his ms also that is post graduation internship but there was a call from the uh, you know um, uh, ministry or from the authorities to join a mission to china okay so because of this reason he stopped his post graduation studies and he went to china dr cotnis always wanted to travel around the world and uh, practice medicine in different parts of the globe so the desire of dr cotnis was not to stay back at one place and do something he always wanted to travel different different places okay so he started his medical expedition in vietnam and then moved on to singapore and brunei these are the different different places okay for so first he journey was directly from india to vietnam and then they were moved to singapore and from there they were moved to brunei so in 1937 the communist general zhu dai requested jawaharlal nehru to send some indian physicians to china during the second sino japanese war to help the soldiers so this happens usually between the countries this china japan war was going on in 1937 and the you know general communal general communist general in the sense chinese china is the you know politician general he requested jawaharlal nehru to send some of the physicians some of the doctors so that they can uh, uh you know uh, treat these wound, wounded soldiers the president of indian national congress netaji subhash chandra bose accepted the request and made arrangements to send a team of volunteer doctors a medical team of five doctors was sent as part of indian medical mission team in september 1938 so this request was received by uh, netaji subhash chandra bose so he was at that time the president of indian national congress the congress party that we have now okay 
So accepting this uh, request, he sent the team of five doctors as a medical expedition to China. That was in September 1938. The medical team comprised of M. Attal, M. Cholkar, Dr. Kotnis, B. K. Basu and D. Mukherjee. After the war, all the doctors except Dr. Kotnis returned to India. However, Dr. Kotnis decided to stay back and serve at the military base. So all these five doctors, they went to China. They served there. They treated the soldiers there. Okay, they had given their very good service. And after the war, what was their duty? The duty of these doctors was to come back to India. All of them came back, but Dr. Kotnis did not come back. He still wanted to serve there. He still wanted to serve the military uh, people, the people who get wounded. Okay. He initially started his work in Yanyan and then went to the anti-Japanese base in North China where he worked in the surgical department of the 8th Root Army General Hospital as the physician in charge. So at first he was there in the battleground serving all these wounded soldiers. But later he was finally sent to North China where he worked in the surgical department. Okay, that was the army general hospital, okay, where he had worked as the physician in charge. Physician in charge in the sense, head of all the physicians, just like head of the department, okay. So, we here we can see that he was uh, given a higher position, okay. So, it was while working with soldiers that Dr. Courtney's lost his heart to a Chinese woman, Gyo Kinglen. They were working in the same hospital. Dr. Courtney's was a doctor and Gyo was a nurse. In November 1941, Courtney's married Gyo and a son was born in August 23, 1942. They named the boy Yin Hua, combining the Chinese character Yin for India and Hua for China. So when he was working in this hospital, he fell for a Chinese girl. Okay, her name is Jiu Englen. So, they were working in the same hospital. Courtney's was a doctor and she was a nurse. So, they both married and finally they had a son. And he was named with the combination of Chinese characters. Yin, that is for India. And Hua for China. So, together they made this name for this boy. Gave this name for the boy, Yin Hua. He worked as a lecturer for some time in the military area. At the Dr. Bethne Hygiene School. He took over the post of the first president of Bethany International Peace Hospital after Dr. Norman Bethany passed away. So, uh, you know, he also worked as a lecturer for the physicians at this uh, military area uh, that was at Dr. Bethany Hygiene School, okay, that is kind of medical school, okay. And also he took the uh, post of the president after Dr. Norman Bethany passed away. So when like the head doctor, the president passed away, there was no other person who was capable of filling that post. So here, uh, you know, Dr. Courtney's was suitable person and he became the president of that hospital. So during a long drawn out battle against Japanese troops in 1940, Dr. Courtney's performed operations for 72 hours non-stop without any sleep and his small team conducted 50 operations every day fortnight. So here you can see there was another war. There was another battle against Japanese troops in 1940. So during this all in you know, a battle and all, Dr. Courtney's performed 72 hours non-stop, uh, you know, operations. 72 hours in the sense it is more than two days without any sleep. Okay, so here we can understand his dedication towards the work. Okay, and also he has small team of uh, doctors who conducted nearly 50 operations every day. Nowadays, doctors, you know, after doing one or two surgeries, they say, no, no, I am done. I will do the surgeries tomorrow, postpone the surgeries. But Dr. Courtney and his team, they have completed nearly 50 operations every day. So in those harsh times, <coughs> Mrs. Gyo pro, uh, proved an ideal soulmate but was modest about her contribution. Dr. Courtney's played a major role in controlling 
a virulent strain of plague that hit Chinese soldiers. In the process, he did not fall back from trying out a vaccine on himself. So when he was working this hard, the wife, you know, usually wives say, hey, you, are come, you are working there without, you know, even coming to home or taking care of her son. But she did not say she understood the need of the doctor, Cotnis, at that area. And she was so supportive always. And also, uh, Dr. Cotnis played a major role when, when there was, you know, the strain of plague in the uh, country. And he did not only help the people who got plague, he even tried the vaccine on himself. Just like we have vaccine trials on, uh, you know, COVID-19 now. At that time, there was also vaccine for plague. But here, Dr. Cotnis, he tried that vaccine on himself. The hardships of uh, suppressed military life and the stresses that were especially relevant to the frontline doctors finally began to tell on Dr. Cotnis. He died of epilepsy on uh, November, uh, December 9, 1942 at the age of 32 and was buried in the Hevers Courtyard, Nankwan village. So you can just imagine that he has spent his life entirely working for the Chinese soldiers and most of the time without any sleep and rest. So because of that reason, you know, his body has become so weak and he was finally dead. Okay. And he was dead on uh, December 9, 1942, just at the age of 32. He was very young and he was not brought back to India, he was buried there itself in the Nankon village, China. Okay. In order to cherish the memory of Dr. Cotnes, the Chinese government built a memorial for him in Xi Jinping city, Hebei province in 1976. So after the death, the Chinese government did, of uh, Dr. Cotnes, the Chinese government did not forget his service. Okay. So in memory of him, they also built a memorial on his name in a city that is in Hebei province. No single Indian has been so much revered by ordinary Chinese at, uh, as this doctor from a middle class family in northern India. So there is no other person who is from India who is respected so well in China by every common person. Okay. Along with the Canadian doctor um, Norman Bethany, he continues to be revered by Chinese people. So there are only two foreign people for Chinese who whom uh, you know Chinese people used to respect. One was Dr. Bethne, Norman Bethne, he is from Canada and another one is Dr. Courtney, he is from India. Only these two people were revered, respected by all the Chinese people. In April 2005, both their graves were covered completely in flowers donated by the Chinese people during the Qingming festival, a day used to Chinese, uh, to the Chinese to commemorate their ancestors commemorate in the sense to remember okay see every year we have kind of days where we remember our ancestors who were dead so in april 2005 these two graves of the two doctors dr norman bethany's grave and also dr courtney's grave they were both graves were covered with rose flowers they were donated by the chinese people usually this thing happens this type of uh, you know cultural event happens only for the people who are from China, who served the you know, Chinese people, all the ancestors, all the great people who served the Chinese people. But along with them, these two doctors are also, were also given the same respect. Okay? They were also treated as their ancestors. Now, a small museum there has a handbook which contains words that Courtney wrote in his passage from India to China. Some of the instruments that the surgeons used at that time and many photographs of doctors. So after the death of Dr. Courtney's, the Chinese government also set up a museum, uh, you know, which has the handwritten book of Dr. Courtney's. He has titled it as a passage from uh, India to China. And also at that time, they used many surgical tools and instruments. So all of them are placed in that museum. Both China and India honored him with stamps in 1982 and 1983 respectively. 
so this is the stamp from india which is in 1993 okay so the in respect of the people service usually countries release these type of stamps on the later occasion courtney's family stood before his grave in north china matters memorial cemetery hebei province the family also toured shejing wang and visited the dr bethnes international peace hospital where courtney's once served as its director so after the death of courtney's all the family members from mumbai they went to china and they you know stood before the grave of dr courtney's and gave him all the respect and from there he, they also went to the uh, you know international peace hospital where courtney's was once a president okay president of the hospital in exclusive interviews with china daily in beijing and shanghai the family members shared their memories of the doctor not only as a hero but also as a loved brother husband and an adventurous young man so all the family members they were interviewed by the media and in that interviews you know they had given uh, the memories they had shared their memories that they had with dr courtney's and uh, they said that he was a lovely son a lovely brother and also lovely husband and also an adventurous young man who served the people okay so they had very good relation with dr courtney's he was vivacious and liked singing sometimes i couldn't stop laughing when he told jokes said jo recalling courtney's with a smile so when uh, courtney's wife was interviewed uh, she said uh, he is very good singer and also he cracks very nice jokes so whenever he cracks jokes i can't stop myself laughing and laughing so this was said by uh, the wife of dr courtney's for uh, to an interview the tragic tale was to continue even after dr courtney's death their son yin hua who was 3 months old when dr courtney's dead also passed away when he was just 25 okay when dr courtney's was dead the age of their son was only 3 months okay but you know after the death of his father at an very young age that is 25 years old even son their son yin hua also was dead okay mrs courtney's moved to dalian in the 60s and lived there since okay so in the in her 60s um mrs courtney's the wife of courtney's she moved to another place and she started to live there despite the two premature deaths mrs courtney's never let weeds cover her india connection she visited the country at least half a dozen times and maintained her links with the courtney's family that means the courtney's family they accepted this lady though she is a chinese lady they accepted her as their uh, in law so uh, you know doc, um, this mrs courtney's she had two premature births before dr courtney's uh, passed away okay so uh, even after that she did not you know lose her courage she did not lose her intention of going back to india she always used to visit india she always used to visit her family okay all the family members of courtney's she used to spend time with them and all okay mrs courtney's had been an honored guest at many high level diplomatic functions between china and india such as the banquet dalian mayor bo xilai hosted for then indian president k r narayan in june 2000 and during the visit of then prime minister watched by during beijing in june 2003 so whenever there was meeting okay like delegation delegates would come presidents would come prime ministers would come so whenever this this type of meeting would be there between china and india mrs courtney's had been uh, a guest of honor all the times okay so here she is seen as a symbol of mediator between india and china she was a regular invitee at the indian embassy functions in china in november 2006 she accompanied chinese president hua jintao on a state visit to china she died in uh, she died on 28 june 2012 so uh, this lady mrs courtney also was a regular invitee at the indian embassy that is in china whenever there is function functions would be there right in the embassies so whenever there is event they invite 
you know mrs cornis okay she was seen as their member both by indians and also chinese people and also she accompanied chinese president when he came to india okay she came along with him as a symbol of uh, you know friendship or as a symbol of unity and a mediator and also she was dead finally in 2012 very recently well cornis is venerated in china with textbooks recounting his story to children at a beijing hospital even a creating a medical team in his memory very little known him of uh, in the land of his birth see on the one hand the chinese government they had given the life of dr cornis in the books even to the children okay as a respect of this doctor they had you know given the life story of uh, dr cornis in the books school children books okay and also they have very good respect for him okay and now here we can see that even on his name there was a hospital created and also there was a medical team in his memory so one side it is like that all the chinese were respecting him so much and on the other side you know very little is known very little is known in the sense nobody knows about him that much in his land of birth okay that means in india so few in mumbai or the rest of the country know about the doctor who served in china during the 1938 sino japanese war and died there in 1992 says his uh, stepchair uh, spe- septuagenarian young sister watsala so she says young sister in the sense the sister who almost was very old okay her name was watsala she said to the media that you know only few people in mumbai know about my brother and also few people know about uh, my brother in the country or in the world so not all the people know about his greatness who worked in china and also served in the military now let us see however dr cornis became famous in his hometown after his death with the publication of his best selling biography one who never returned written by a film journalist kwaza abbas ahmed in 1945 and the screening of the 1946 classic bollywood movie dr cornis ki amma kahani directed by v shantaram so in the beginning not many people knew about him uh, because you know he was not that famous in india but you know later there was a book uh, you know released which has titled as one one who never written it was written by kwaza abbas and also there was a movie on his name dr cornis ki amma kahani it was directed by v shantaram here on the screen you can see uh, you know dr cornis ki amar kahani this is the title this is the chinese girl and here he is dr cornis okay echoing watsala is lena fernandes the general secretary of the mumbai chapter of indo china friendship association friendly ties between india and china have their own significance even on a humanitarian level so the sister uh, you know watsala or ria fernandes she says you know this type of chapter between mumbai and uh, china it has become kind of association and we are continuously maintaining this type of friendly ties between india and china with the ideology of dr cotness the selfless service rendered by dr cotness a proud son of india during the sino japanese war and to wounded chinese soldiers is an evergreen symbol of the human relationship between the people of india and china so this type of service by dr cotness who worked in the chinese military as a physician who you know treated many chinese soldiers okay it has become an evergreen symbol evergreen symbol in the sense you know the symbol which never perishes away which never goes away so this shows the relationship human relationship between china and india added cotness elder sister manorama singing in their 60 year apartment crowded with chinese memorabilia memorabilia in the sense all the chinese memories okay the sister of dr cotness brought all the memories of her brother from china okay so there she was 
saying or speaking about Dr. Cornus. What was he saying? Let us see. Had it not been for the renowned filmmaker V. Shantaram and the Amar uh, Charitakatha comic book and maybe a few other Indians would have never known how our brother who served in Mao Zedong's Red Army saved lives during the war. So now she, uh, her brother, uh, his brother, Courtney's, uh, you know, sister, who is uh, Manorama, she says, without the film, without the filmmaker Vishantaram, and without there was a book that was Amar Charita Katha, that was a comic book. Without these two things, or without these two people who has written this book and also who has written, who has directed this film, my brother wouldn't be known to the people very well. So here she is actually thanking these two people for making the film on his brother and also writing a book about his, about uh, uh, Dr. Cotness. Okay, so that was the lesson for you. Later we have a glossary. Once we can go through the glossary, and uh, with this we complete reading A of unit 8 here and after that we'll go through the rest of the two readings that is be thankful and the dead rat. Thank you for watching students. See you all in the next video.